You are a humble peasant somewhere in England in the year of our Lord, 1348. You have been feeling sick and shivery for the past few days, and upon returning to your hovel, you feel that the painful red sore under your armpit is now licking pus. You know that it may not be long before God smites you from this earth. This is the Black Death. This is Worst Ways to Die. The Black Death is the name given to the plague pandemic that swept across Europe between 1347 and 1351. While it's hard to know exactly how many people the Black Death killed, estimates range from 25 million to 50 million deaths, a staggering two-thirds of Europe's population wiped out by the disease. The Black Death pandemic first emerged somewhere in Central Asia in the early 1300s. A pandemic, such as the Black Death, is an outbreak of an infectious disease that covers an expansive area, perhaps crossing continents or even spreading worldwide, whereas an epidemic is an outbreak confined to a smaller area. The plague is thought to have been brought west along trade routes within the Mongol Empire, eventually reaching the Crimean Peninsula and the Black Sea coast. From here, the plague was spread to Europe by merchants, both through infected sailors and by plague-carrying rats embarking upon the merchant ships and thriving below decks. The first recorded instance of the Black Death in Christian Europe was in October 1347, in the port of Messina in Sicily. A fleet of ships had arrived carrying goods from the Black Sea, but by the time it reached Messina, many of its crew had died, and the survivors who remained were visibly sick. This was noticed by the authorities who eventually expelled the ships, but within a matter of days, townspeople began to be struck down by the plague. The Black Death arrived in other Mediterranean ports around the same time. Italian chronicler Gabriele de Musi wrote, when the sailors reached these places and mixed with the people there, it was as if they had brought evil spirits with them. Every city, every settlement, every place was poisoned by the contagious pestilence, and their inhabitants, both men and women, died suddenly. From these Italian ports, the Black Death spread at a terrifying pace. It has been calculated that the plague spread at a rate of up to 30 miles per week, in a time when horseback was the fastest possible mode of travel. As well as spreading overland, plague-ridden ships expelled from the Italian ports docked in southern France and Spain. By the end of 1348, the Black Death had spread throughout Italy, Greece, France, Spain, Portugal, and into southern England and the Holy Roman Empire. The disease's transmission slowed in 1349 as it reached Scandinavia, but it would reach as far as Novgorod in Russia in the following years. The Black Death also struck the Middle East, with devastating outbreaks in the cities of the Holy Land, Alexandria, Baghdad, and Mecca. The rapid spread of Black Death was aided by climactic and environmental factors. In the earlier decade of the 1300s, Europe had been hit by repeated famines due to harsh winters that scholars now attribute to a general cooling of Europe's climate during that time. Malnutrition weakened the immune systems of Europe's peasants, leaving them at even greater risk of catching the plague. But how exactly was the Black Death spread? Black Death is generally, although not universally, accepted to have been caused by the bacterium Yersinia pestis, named after Alexandre Yersin, the French doctor that discovered the organism in 1894. It can happily inhabit the bloodstream of a variety of rodents, including rats and marmots, before being transmitted by oriental rat fleas. After the flea feeds on infected blood, the Yersinia pestis bacteria form a mass that clogs the flea's digestive system. The next time they go to feed, whether it be on human or rodent blood, the flea cannot fully ingest the blood because of the mass, instead mixing the blood with the Yersinia pestis bacteria before vomiting the mixture back into the bite wound it has created, thereby infecting a new host. The flea, of course, dies of starvation, but we won't worry ourselves too much about that. In this way, humans became infected from being in close proximity with brown rats in particular, through fleas biting the infected rats before jumping onto a nearby human and biting them. Fleas could also jump from human to human, explaining why the disease could infect whole families in quick succession. This rapid spread was one of the most terrifying aspects of the Black Death. Gabrielli de Mussi again. Whilst we spoke to them, whilst they embraced us and kissed us, we scattered the poison from our lips. Going back to their homes, they in turn soon infected their whole families. After the flea bites and regurgitates plague-infested blood into a new human host, the bacteria are transported away from the bite wound by the lymphatic system, a system of vessels and nodes that drain excess water from body tissues, which also transports immune cells. Having been transported by lymph vessels, the bacteria can collect in the body's lymph nodes, particularly in the armpits and groin, 
Within one to seven days of infection, these become painful swellings known as buboes, and are a common theme in medieval sources describing the Black Death. It first betrayed itself by the emergence of certain tumours in the groin or the armpits, some of which grew as large as a common apple. These buboes are accompanied by headache, tiredness, and alternating fevers and chills as the body's immune system tries to fight the growing bacterial infection. Gastrointestinal symptoms, such as vomiting and diarrhea, can also occur as the body seeks to rid the gut of infection, but only ends up dehydrating the victim. Bacteria overwhelm the body and cause septic shock. The victim's blood pressure drops to unsustainable levels, and blood can no longer properly supply the body's vital organs with oxygen, causing multiple organ failure and eventually death within two to three days. This manifestation of bubonic plague, named after those characteristic buboes, was the most common, but not the only form of black death. In pneumonic plague, Yersinia pestis infects the victim's lungs, causing them chest pain, <laughs> shortness of breath, and to cough up blood, thereby spreading pneumonic plague through airborne droplets. Septicemic plague can also occur if the Yersinia pestis bacteria enter the bloodstream directly rather than through the lymph vessels. They quickly multiply and cause a severe infection, and can even cause the blood to start to abnormally clot inside blood vessels, causing gangrene as tissues are starved of blood. The sheer number of people who perish in the Black Death is staggering. It is thought that up to 60% of Europe's population were wiped out. Trying to estimate a death toll with any degree of accuracy is a process fraught with difficulty, due to the piecemeal nature of data from 700 years ago, and so estimates differ widely between sources. Most estimates are in the range of between 25 and 75 million people, with the very highest estimates going up to 200 million deaths, although this includes plague deaths in China and other later outbreaks in the 1300s. While most of Europe's population were rural peasants, and thus made up the majority of deaths, Europe's growing towns and cities were disproportionately affected by the plague. Townspeople living in close proximity to one another allowed for easy transmission of the disease, and the filthy conditions of most medieval towns meant an abundance of plague-spreading rats and fleas. Florence, a great cultural centre of Italy, lost half her population to the Black Death. In London, perhaps two-thirds of the population perished, and between 1340 and 1400, it appears that the population of England as a whole declined from 5 million to 2 million people. Over 300 years would pass before Europe once again reached its pre-plague population levels. Devastation of such magnitude had profound consequences beyond the grief of those left behind. 14th century Europe was a deeply religious society, in a way impossible for us to imagine now. People from all strata of society earnestly believed that God, his saints, angels and demons all had a direct impact on their lives. To many, the great magnitude of suffering was a clear sign that God was punishing them for their misdeeds. Some turned to forms of self-punishment, including self-flagellation. In many cities across Europe, local Jews were blamed for causing the plague, and thousands were massacred as the Jewish ghettos of cities such as Toulon, Erfurt, Basel and Frankfurt were sacked. However, it is generally agreed that those peasants who survived the Black Death benefited both socially and economically. Previously, rural peasant labourers were tied legally and economically to the local lord of the manor, to whom they were obliged to provide goods and labour in exchange for their portion of land. When the Black Death massively depopulated the countryside, demand for labour was so high that peasants could now leave their traditional manors for higher wages and cheaper land elsewhere. The relative lack of workers to produce food is also thought to have encouraged the adoption of labour-saving innovations, such as moving away from grain farming towards animal husbandry. While the outbreak we know as Black Death had subsided by 1350, the disease merely lay dormant and returned to haunt Europe in repeated outbreaks over the next 300 years, before the last major plague epidemic in Europe in 1770 in Moscow, which killed over 70,000 people. The plague still persists in parts of the world in the 21st century, in its modern, less virulent form. Thanks to modern medicine, Yersinia pestis bacteria are easily eradicated with antibiotics such as gentamicin and levofloxacin. For more of the gruesome side of history, subscribe to Worst Ways to Die.